Hey guys, today we're going to apply that knowledge from yesterday about exponents into what's called the order of operations. Uh, but first we're going to start with two vocabulary, or, or two, yeah, vocab words, uh, one of which is going to be order of operations. But first off, we're going to talk about something called a numerical expression. So if you just kind of take those and think about the words individually. Numerical is numbers. Expression is a way of stating something. So it's a way of stating numbers. Okay, so what does that mean for math? Let's highlight that guy. So that means a math phrase. So math has phrases and sentences, and a phrase means there's no equal sign. There's nothing you are solving for. All you can do is if you have numbers only, you can simplify it down and get it down to an answer. Or if it has variables in it, you have to be able to put numbers in for those variables that you're given and solve it. So this doesn't have an equal sign in it. So it's a math phrase that contains numbers and operations. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, but no equal sign. Okay, so you're not trying to solve for the box for the mystery number. Okay, so let's talk about order of operations. And I know you guys have studied this, but you may not have studied all the parts that make up the whole. Yeah, you should have, because most of you know the little mnemonic device. It's a series of steps to solve an expression so that's like a numerical expression with uh, more than one operation because if it's only one operation uh, you kind of know what to do. Two plus three? Mm. I add, right? Uh, so everyone gets the same answer. Now, when I say everyone, I mean the entire world, okay? So this is, was developed so that people in America could come up with the same answers people in Germany. Okay, so this is what we needed to do so that we would all come up with the same answer. All right, now I'm sure you guys have heard something, and I'm going to just jot it here, called uh, Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. Okay, and I kind of like that. What it stands for is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Some things I really like about it, and some things I don't like about it at all. So what I, it's a good way to remember things, but the very first thing I don't like is what the P stands for. P is parentheses. That's a, one, you know, those little curvy things. The problem is um, there's more than that that can show up in a math expression, okay? Or a math equation for that matter. So we're going to change that P and we're going to call it G. And that's going to stand for grouping symbols. So when I look at a math problem and I see any grouping symbols, I'm going to do that first. So what are those grouping symbols? Well, let's see. We've got the parentheses. We've got brackets. We've got braces. Look like a forehead, a nose, and a chin. And you've got a fraction bar. It's also grouping. It's going to group everything in the numerator, then group everything in the denominator, then do the division. Okay. So G is our first and most important thing to start with. Okay. Next comes the one we talked about yesterday. Exponents. So that's our exponents. So if we see exponents after we've taken care of anything in a 
um, grouping symbol than we're going to do uh, any of the exponents. And remember we talked about exponents being called power. So an example of that guy would be like 4 to the 5th power. So we'd have to figure out what 4 to the 5th power equals, sorry, before we can solve the problem further. Now this is the one where sometimes people get a little confused. In PEMDAS, M comes in front of D. M stands for multiply. D stands for divide. And some people think that the multiply always takes place over division, but that's not true. It's multiplication or division as you go from left to right in the problem. Okay, so the very important that those two actually have the same power, it just depends upon who shows up first. Okay, and then A comes in front of S. That's addition comes in front of subtraction. So add, let's just say add, and S is subtract. And people also, for whatever reason, think that I always have to do all the addition before I get to the subtraction. The answer is no. It's addition or subtraction as you go from left to right. Okay? So these two are always whatever shows up first from the beginning of the problem to the end. So that's how we're going to be practicing, practicing, practicing this. All right, so let me talk about grouping symbols. Sometimes you have grouping symbols, and inside the grouping symbols, there's operation. One, two, whatever. So when you have grouping symbols, you all, always follow the order of operations. So in grouping symbols, you always follow the order of operations. So let's do an example problem, and I'm going to give you a doozy just to start it us off. So we have 17 minus 5 squared divided by the quantity 2 plus 3. Okay, so according, I've got subtraction, division, exponents, parentheses, adding. Wow, I've got it all. So this says look for grouping symbols, and I do see my grouping symbols. So I'm going to do what's in the grouping symbol. Now I have a simple math problem to do. So one of the things I want you to focus on is, we've talked about this before, when you're solving any problem, what you're going to do is go from a very long problem to an answer. So you're going to end up with a problem neatly done, lined up, so that when you're finished, it looks like an upside down triangle, meaning the base is on top and the points at the bottom. And once I do an operation, then all of the stuff that was there before disappears. So when I do 2 plus 3, 5 now takes its place. Okay. So then I look, and it says, do you have any exponents? And the answer is, yes, I do. So we're going to do the exponent next. So 17 stays, minus stays. And then 5 squared is 25. And then we have divided by stays, and now the 5 stays. Okay. So then I look for, do I have any multiplication or division? And the answer is, yes, I do. So I'm going to do the division. It's going to be my third thing I do. So I have 17 stays and subtraction stays. And the only thing that I'm dividing, I'm not looking at the signs. I'm just looking at here. I just have 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, I'm left with adding or subtracting, and all I have left is subtracting, so I'm just going to do the math. So that's going to be my last step. And I end up with 17 take away 5 is 12. So if you look at the overall shape 
of your work. There's that upside down triangle that I'm talking about. Okay? So I am going to emphasize again it, this is always going to be right to left. So always multiply or divide from right to left. And always add or subtract. Oh, sorry, right to left. I meant left to right. Oh, boy, 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 my brain. left to right and always add or subtract from left to right okay so basically when you get down to only having adding or subtracting you just do the problem in order from left to right real simple all right so let's get into some practice so directions are going to say find the value of each expression So this is, oh, sorry, I forgot to put in my title. Dang it. So let's just do this. Start with the title. Diarn Me, Lesson 6-2, Order of Operations. And today's date is 1-29-2020. And so now the directions. Find the value of each expression. So we have 4 plus 3 times 5. Okay. So first problem we've got here, uh, no grouping symbols, no exponents. So I look for multiplication or division. And that's where we're going to start this problem. So there's no math done in the head. All the math is done on the paper. 3 times 5 is 15. And then we're left with addition. So that's my second step. And I end up with 4 plus 15 is 19. So notice we've got that nice upside down triangle. On number 2, We've got 16 divided by 2 times 4. So again, no grouping symbols, no exponents, but I do see multiplication and division. So I go to the left and I work towards the right. So I'm going to start there. And I get 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then I write it, excuse me, write out the rest of the problem times 4. And then I've got multiplication. And then I get 8 times 4 equals 32, okay? Third problem, we have 20 divided by 4 plus 17 times 9 times 6. No, sorry, my 9 take away 6. So notice, oh, much more complicated. So I'm going to look through this, and I don't see, oh, I do see a grouping symbol. So this is what I'm going to have to do first. And in the grouping symbol, there's one operation. So I'm going to have to do that one operation. When I do the grouping symbol and I do whatever's inside of it, it's eventually when I only have one thing to do, then once I'm done doing all the math inside, the parentheses disappear. So this is now going to be 9 take away 6, which is 3. Okay. So next, uh, no exponents. So I'm looking for multiplication or division, and I have both. So I do whatever I see first, so that would be the division. And I get 5, 20 divided by 4, and then I write out the rest of the problem, plus 17 times 3. Now I still see multiplication, so that's going to, oops, sorry, not second, that's my third step. So then I'm going to have 5 
plus, and then 17 times 3. Now, I've done that one so many times that I've memorized it, and it's 51. Okay, if you need to do the math off to the side, you do the math off to the side, but on the paper, not off to the side on another piece of paper, which some kids like to tell me to do. And then the last thing I have is adding or subtracting. In this case, it's adding, so that's going to be my fourth step. So the more operations, the more work it involves. So 5 plus 51 is going to give me an answer of 56. Okay, last one of this, and then we're going to have a word problem. So we get 5 plus 8, or the quantity, excuse me, 8 squared minus 2 times 2. So I have the grouping symbol has to take place first, so I'm going to put a little star next to it, so above here. But in the grouping symbol, I see two things. In there, I see exponents. So exponents are actually going to be the very first thing I do. So I still am going to have the parentheses, but when I take 8 squared, I get 64, and then I write out the rest. Minus 2, close the parentheses, and then times 2. Okay, I still have things in my parentheses, so I'm going to put a little star above it. And I have a subtraction problem, so that's going to be my second step, is to do the subtraction. Now, because that's the last operation inside the parentheses, the parentheses are now going to go away. So I have 64 take away 2 is 62, and then times 2. So then I look and I notice um, I do have multiplication, so that's going to be my third step. And I get 5 plus, and then 62 times 2. Again, you can do it off to the side. It's pretty easy math. You might even be able to do it in your head. And then the last step is either going to be an adding or subtracting, right? Or last several could be. And so this is going to be the last thing we do. And we get 5 plus 124 is 129. Now what I'm going to do is, for the word problem, I'm going to go ahead and go off screen write it down because nobody needs to listen to me do it and we don't need to waste the time and then I'd ask you to do the same thing and then solve the problem okay okay so we've got Alex and her three friends are at the mall each person buys pretzel for four dollars sauce for dollar and drink for two dollars write an expression for the total then find the total cost so first thing we need to do is figure out how many people are involved and it's Alex and her three friends so that means you have a total of four people that are going to be involved. Now, each person, so that's kind of a key word here, says each person, they're going to buy a pretzel for $4. They're going to buy a sauce for a dollar, and they're going to buy a drink for $2, okay? So what does that look like mathematically? Well, we have four people, and if you're going to buy the same thing, you can just use multiplication because it's fast adding. So you have four people, and they are each buying a pretzel, and you have those same four people, and they're each going to be buying a sauce for a dollar, and... You have the same four people, each buying a drink for $2. So that's the first part of this is the expression. Now to solve it, I'm going to do my math. Now notice I have three multiplication problems separated by addition. So I'm going to take care of all three multiplication problems at one time. So. It works out that 16, 4 times 4, dollars was spent on the pretzels. For the sauce, it's 4 times 1 or 4 dollars was spent on that. And then for the drinks, 4 times 2 is 8 dollars. So that's how much money was spent on that. Now, according to order of operations, from left to right, I'm going to add up. So I'm going to add up the 16 plus 4 first, which is 20. And then I'm going to add the 8, so then I get 28. So I would say, for an answer, Alex and her three friends 
spent $28 on pretzels, sauce, and, oops, my aid didn't work, drinks. And that's it for today's notes. All right, have a good time with this, guys. Bye.